Open Virada. Yeah, sure. Uh, you, you played in the US Women's Open, I think, uh, quite a few times. In your opinion, what makes the US Women's Open such a special event? Well, first of all, I think it's it's the venue that is so special and in each and every year. I think the USGA does a great job of selecting the venue each year that has history and a unique layout um, that is going to test every element of the player's game. Um, and then second of all, I think it's the field that is very special. Um, everybody, anybody, you know, every, any average Jane with a handicap of 2.4 or less can have a chance to try to qualify for it. And so I think it's amazing that um, you can be young, you can be old, you can be amateur and pros and you have a chance to, to have the week of your life at the US Open. So I think that, that's amazing. Okay, Swen, what do you think as, a, as an observer? Have, did you ever try to qualify for the US Women's Open when you were playing on tour? Yes, I have um, and miserably failed. Um, <laughs> but I think in my opinion, from you know, being able to be there um, from a media perspective, um, having gone uh, three years now, um, you know, to be present there on the other side of the ropes, uh, I think USGA does an amazing job organizing the US Open. Any of the Opens are amazing. Um, it is just so organized, everything's done you know, with, with so much precision. And, and to second Verada, I think um, the course that they pick always has so much history. It always has uh, so much stories to it, you know, and, and always for some reason leading up to the US Open, there's just so many storylines, so many players that could contend. And I know this is every other tournament, but really it seems like at the US Open, really every everyone seemed to, to rise to the top right. a little bit. Um, yeah. And, and, and also the same thing as she said, I think it's the field. Um, I think it's so exciting because you have so many amateurs that are playing. And we've seen um, year in, year out, how some of the amateurs have been able to contend um, and, and really showcasing, like you said, just the, the, the range of players. Um, and I would say for me, I love it because of the course setup and how USGA sets up the golf courses. Um, it's usually super hard. And it, you know, like Verata said, it really highlights um, the strength of players' games, but also the weaknesses of players' games. So I, I really like that, that part of the US Open. Okay. So, um, you know, it, it really, so I guess it really brings the cream out of the crop, so to speak. So, could we rather perhaps, uh, who are your picks for this year and perhaps <laughs> a winning score, First perhaps? Uh, wow, um, yeah. winning score. I would it would be tough for me to predict because I, I really don't know the course and um, we don't know how the the course is playing in the winter time. Um, so, anyways, I would go for the picks first. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I I usually like to root for the underdogs, like maybe a NASA Hataoka, uh, a Minji uh, Lee, someone yeah. who okay. who's who's been knocking yeah. on the door but yeah, haven't. Uh, Minji would be good. Yeah. Yeah, but haven't quite done it. You know, these two players are the players that uh, have always been contending, but they have not won a major yet. So it'd be nice to see them break through at this week. Mm. Sue? So, uh, oh, and then, oh, so, sorry, sorry. And then, and then of course, I, I can't pass up on the the, the obvious ones, um, like maybe a Daniel Kang, Inby Park, uh, yeah, Se Young Paul, Kim, yeah. you know, who the, the players who are in form. Um, these three players are ranked one, two, and three on the CME yeah. Globe season ranking. So obviously they've been dominant this year. Um, so obviously yeah. can't pass up <laughs> on them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sven, your favorite this week? Uh, next week, man. Um, you know, I, 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 I would love to go with an underdog, but at the same time, it's really, it's a tough position to, to pick because this year has been such a strange year um, with the season yeah. and it's really hard to see who's trending, who's not, but I'm going to have to go with the obvious ones. Um, I'm going to have to pick Seon Kim uh, purely because I, I just think her game is really suitable for this golf course. Um, you know, she's, she's, I call the little chili putty uh, because yeah. she's, she's, she might not be built like some of the LPGA players, but she has so much power in her swing, but so much accuracy and she has great touch around the greens. Um, and I feel like that's something that you would have to have um, in your bag solid um at the u.s open um of course this year she's won twice uh you know back to back and and she's really been playing some great golf and she's been playing great golf for the past five years um and then i'm gonna go with with danielle k um she's my second yeah. favorite um same thing she's just 
been playing so well this year. Uh, she's been working really hard with Butch. Uh, I saw her at Christmas last year um, in Vegas. And, uh, you know, she says she's working super hard. Um, she's really starting to, to shape up her iron game. And, and as we all know, at the U.S. Open, you got to hit greens and you got to hit proximity to the pit. So um, she's the next pick. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, but I think neither of you has been to this year's venue. So it's going to be a bit hard, this next question. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you know of the venue? Uh, what you've heard? You know, they're playing on two golf courses, uh, I think, uh, for, yeah. the, for the first time, as far as I can remember, Cypress Creek and Jack Rabbit. Have you, uh, what, what do you know of the golf courses? Uh, Rana, you want me to go that? first? Yeah, oh, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. You go okay. first. You go first. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, I, I don't know, like like you said, you know, I think both Verla and I have never been there and never played it. Um, all I know is from what I read and from what I see um, from my research online, um, I think they, they both play very differently, um, which I think yeah. is going to be the challenge this year. I think it's it's um, it's very different as a U.S. Open setup to play two courses, um, but this also has to do with, like you said, uh, the U.S. Open being at the end of the year. Um, that in itself is, is there's so many elements, right? Um, so yeah. they're just trying to get players to 100 56 players to finish um, 36 holes to be honest yeah. um, but Cyprus apparently is more like a championship course um, huge greens um, for what I know they don't have a lot of fairway uh, bunkers um, but I think they're going to probably play the rough um, pretty severely um, so it's kind of like your typical you know championship course you know that the, the greens are, are in quadrants it's so big um, so you definitely want to be able to hit to the right quadrants when you do hit your iron shots but the jackrabbit apparently is some is a course that yeah you might only play it once uh during the course of the week but yeah. it's one that you don't want to take for granted um and one that you might want to pay some attention to as well um because it could really change your score in, in a course of 36 holes um, apparently it is a lot tighter off the tee um, it's got a lot more dog legs, so it's a bit more old school. Um, it's got smaller and harder greens as well. So with a lot of, you know, kind of a turtle kind of greens, there's a lot of false fronts on the sides and, and, you know, it, it's just like, it's a lot tougher in that sense. And, um, yeah, so you, you really have to play two very different style golf courses. Okay. Yeah, good, uh, what do you well, think? Um, uh, yeah, everything that Suan said is what I've read as well. Um, but I think t let's talk about the the two course situation here. Um, I think that it's going to add yet another element of difficulty yeah. to the players because in terms of preparing for the week, because um, basically now usually the players have two to three rounds to learn the course. And this is a new venue um, so yeah. for, for most everybody. And uh, so... Basically, usually they have two, three rounds to learn the course. Now they have to divide that time into two courses. So basically, their preparation time is cut in half. Um, and this is a U.S. Open. You know, this is a big week. Um, so um, I think that's going to, like I said, I'm going to add another element to, um, to the player's preparation. Yeah, I actually saw a lot of players are, compared to many years, they, they actually have spent some time in Houston. Um, yeah prior so I, I see a lot of them actually out there um yeah. perhaps like like Verata is saying you know you got to divide your time and, and and when you arrive on Monday uh, to, yeah. to try and do two courses it's just impossible um, yeah, that's, so... that's what that's what Kelly Tan did uh, Malaysia's Kelly Tan she skipped a couple I think one of the tournaments a couple of weeks back and just spent a whole week playing champions golf yeah both courses so I think yeah. that was a good call and, and I think it's pretty cool in Houston right now right uh, so yes. that's going to yeah. affect things a lot. So, uh, Suen, what do you think? The weather going to play a big role in heat contents? You know, those are perhaps uh, uh, yeah. no use in that kind of weather. Yeah, huge. I mean, I would yeah. say uh, this, this this moving in the time of the year is just like the Masters. I think it yeah. it, it plays such a, a completely different element to the U.S. Open. You know, you, all of a sudden you're playing in the summer. It's hot. Um, the last few years they've been playing on the East Coast. It's been sweaty. It's been rainy. It's been wet. The course have been playing soggy. Um, now to playing in the wintertime where apparently next week, uh, most of the week, you got a low of six degrees Celsius and a high yeah. of, of something ridiculous like 17. Um, you know, they're expecting a little bit of rain on Saturday and Sunday, which would just drop the temperatures. Um, and I think, too, the grass um, would be playing different. You know, I think during that time on that side of uh, of, of the country they do an overseed. Um, so, you know, that in itself just changes the entire 
um, week of the U.S. Open, and 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 I think it'll make it so interesting. Yeah, could be right. Now, I think you must have played some golf in in the U.S. in that time of the year in that part of uh, the U.S. Uh, Tough to play in that code, those kind oh, of. Oh, it's it, it's miserable. You, um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can. Uh, I got I caught a glimpse of um, the Volunteers of America on online this morning, yeah. and I saw the the girls are, oh my god, they're bundled up in you know yeah. nibs and everything, and so yeah. I think they they got a glimpse of what it's gonna be like next week. Um, so, besides the the weather. Um, that is going to be a huge uh, and obvious difference. I think one other difference will be in the uh, the crowds being absent this year. Um, uh, good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, usually the the players can feed off of the energy from the, the crowds, but this year there there's not going to be that, so they have to find other re- uh, sources of of, uh, um, of good vibes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And also, one other benefit of having the crowds on site, I think, is um, if the players' ball do find the rough, sometimes the rough gets stomped down so much that yeah, correct. They, they actually find a good lie out of the rough. But now, without the crowd there, um, good luck. <laughs> yeah, like what happened? Like what happened to Bryson at the Masters? I think that's a good example. You know, he would never yeah. have lost that yeah. ball if there were crowds. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're going to stick with Kunmirada. I think this question is a must-ask. We're running out of time. Uh, you've played oh, in already? six U.S. six U.S. Women's Open. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, and two as a two as an amateur, correct? Yeah, you know what? I was reading your yeah. question and I was like, "Wow, he, you're keeping up with my stats better than I do." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, so what? What? what me- I mean, it must have been the, the early days when you played as an amateur. That must have, must have been amazing. What? What memories stand out the most? Well, um, I think it's the crowds. Um, okay. They they're just so energizing, so uplifting. You know, they they just cheer you on whether you hit good shot or bad shot. And okay. uh, my favorite memory was the the year I got paired with uh, Annika Sorenstam and Christy Kerr. Um, that year I was I already wow. turned pro, um, but yeah. I I got to pair with to be paired with them because of um, winning the U.S. Women's Amateur the, the amateur, previous correct. year. Yeah. yeah, so obviously a lot of people turned up to watch us. Um, and I was so nervous on the first tee. I was just hoping I didn't, <laughs> I didn't top my, my tee shot. Um, <laughs> and uh, But yeah, a lot of people turned up to watch us. And I think a lot of them actually came to the first tee just to hear how my last name was pronounced. So <laughs> that was pretty okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I have Mira Pat Pong Pon. I got it <laughs> and then, correct, right? And then everybody yeah. go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because because the announcer got it right, not because yeah. it was made up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. So, so and yeah, the atmosphere is amazing, right? Like what uh we read out we read us at from the, it you, really is. Uh, covering the event. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And and like she said, you know, it is so energizing and 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 the American crowd is just so positive. Like she says, just uplifting. They, they really give you their 120%. If they're there, they're there. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's, um, it's really, really nice to see. And it's such a shame that this year um, that's not going to happen, you know, at the U.S. Open. But hopefully, fingers crossed, next year we have a little normalcy back. Um, we'll never know, but hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, fingers yeah. crossed. Okay, we're going to go off tangent a bit, uh, talk about your home countries. Uh, so, mm-hmm. Anne. It seems to be a surge in the women's game in Singapore. You know, they just had a big uh, junior event, the EFG uh, Junior Masters. So, uh, mm-hmm. do you think we'll see a player from Singapore on the LPJ Tour from this current crop, like Shannon Tan and so on? I, I think I'm hopeful. Uh, you know, I, I I think the fact that we've how we've uh, made a progression in the last ten to fifteen years in Singapore um, with golf in general. Um, you know, it's just amazing. I, I think the SGA and, and every supporting association have done such an amazing job um, giving all these girls and, and boys the opportunity to, to compete and not only compete, but also be able to travel and, and compete in different countries, meet different people. Um, and I feel like that is so important to your success um, as a player because uh, you know, it's one thing to be great in your own country, but it's another to be internationally um, 
exposed and, and, and really get to see the different kinds of players and kind of feel like, oh, you know, there, there's different bars that you set every single year that you go to these different tournaments. Um, so I think, you know, I think I'm definitely very hopeful. I think that the larger is just you, we play on stats, right? The, the bigger the pool, the more yeah. chances we have. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, you know, I really hope so. And I'm really proud of what we've done in Singapore with golf. And, and I really hope uh, one day we can see our very own Singaporean on the uh, leaderboard at the U.S. Open. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, we've got a Malaysian <laughs> there now. So, and But yeah. lots of Thais, lots of Thai players. But when you were out on tour, Kunvi Rada, you must have been the only Thai. And now we've got, uh, you know, the Jutanu Guns, the Jasmine, Bonanong. We've got <laughs> players from Southeast Asia like Bianca, Kelly Tan. So uh, does that bode well, you think, for golf in this part of the world? You know, and why, why is Thailand just up there right now? You know, you've got, I think, seven, six, seven players. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. I, I Back yeah. then, I was one of the few Thais. There were Rasi Kalayanamita and Honor ah, in cool, the yeah. Yang okay. if you remember. Um, so yeah, I was one of the few, um, but uh, now fast forward 15 years later and we have 10 plus um, and it's amazing. And now yeah. we've got, you know, others from the Southeast Asian region right. like Bianca and Kelly Tan. And then yeah. we have several more coming up as well. Uh, hopefully we'll see them soon. Yuka Sasso and Atiya Titikul. Um, yeah. I think um, the search in, in um the women from our region is because of what area has done. I think she's shown us that we can be major champions and we can be world number one. And so I think, I think it's important to have an idol to, to follow in the footsteps. And um, I think that that's been happening. Uh, we have area and we have others like, you know, these days we, we, we are seeing Bianca, we are seeing Kelly Tan on the, on TV. And so I think a lot of the, the younger girls are, are inspired by that. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. hope to see more, <laughs> especially yes. from Malaysia and Singapore. Thailand's got enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah. Okay, uh, last question for Suen. You just became a mom in June when you and Mike welcomed baby Casey, right? Uh, so yeah. What's it like being a mom? Oh boy. Um, you know what? This is the toughest thing I've ever done. Uh, I would say yeah. even playing golf might be a little bit easier than this. Uh, but you know, it, it's. Um, we're so blessed and, and um, you know, I, I just couldn't, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, it's been great. Um, he's been a great, great baby. Um, you know, we, we've just been, uh, you know, I see, I can't even talk. Um, yeah. You're just kind of feeling this over overwhelming sense of love. And um, yeah, we're, we're just tr feeling truly, truly blessed. So we've been very happy and um, yeah, life is different, but hey, different in a good way. <laughs> okay. That's great. Thanks, ladies. Uh, amazing insights. Uh, thank you for taking the time. And, Thanks, uh, John. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you guys at the coverage next week. Okay. Yeah. You will. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Bye. Bye.